What about tantric sex? Mushrooms. Tantric sex. All three together. Well, that, that doesn't add up, though. I mean, it, we had this this thing about. Uh, I put up a blog post about Eckhart Tolle talking to Oprah, and Eckhart, who you know, we'll we'll give him a mark for. Yes, he probably is awakened. Um, <clears throat> Eckhart took some acid. And so he says, well, look, Oprah said, well, this, is a, this is totally off the record, right? And, and uh, she said, oh, yeah, it's absolutely off the record, <laughs> Oprah said. And she said, well, um, it was actually wor worse than my usual state, and it felt jangly and buzzy. It wasn't as good as, and it had some really bad side effects. Now, that was Eckhart's first and only time, so, so you, don't, you don't know. But um, even Eckhart came up with the same conclusion. And in fact, this was better than... Than, than, than LSD. And he recognized the state. He yes. said, "He said, yes, this is the state, but there's a kind of violence to it. Mm -hmm. And it's true, yeah. it was only his first time he hadn't really learned to navigate the space. Right. But um, I, I do think that, um, you know, at least in my own experience, that that's the case, that one of the things I'm grateful to psychedelics, ecodelics, and theogens for is that uh, they, they served as pointers that this state exists. Mm -hmm. But once you can learn how to occupy the state, uh, inhabit the state, abide the state, without um, you know there being anybody there to take the psychedelic, then it really, in my experience, does feel better uh, than that other state. Now, I agree with you. You can start to ratchet it up and saying, oh, well, you know, what about tantric sex on acid with, you know, imaginary infinite consorts uh, and so forth. I think what's interesting about it is, is it's sort of like, you know, getting better and better chocolate. It's still chocolate. <laughs> you know, it's still what it is. And yes, it's preferable to other states uh, that you would in, in, engage in uh, in ordinary uh, life. But I do think there's something so liberated, probably because there's less of me there to experience the uh, everyday non-dual state than there is of me there, even in a full-blown ayahuasca experience, um, you know, for various reasons. Um, so I do think that, again, I'm only speaking about my own experience, that it does feel better and better and better, and it has a lot in common with the kind of cosmic adventure of psychedelics. I think the real taboo that Gary is pointing to here is, is that as a society, we don't even know, basically, that there's anything better than sex and drugs, or sex with drugs. <laughs> that, and, and, and in fact, I think I can say, at least for me, there is. And the thing to not forget is that you can also combine the non-dual state effortlessly with sex. And uh, we've talked a little bit about like how um, there may be some sort of downside to that, that sort of what happens is, is then it seems like for some people, you know, if they're not celibate, then the non-dual state kind of decreases for a while. But I don't really think we have a big enough sample size to know if that's the case or if that has other variables. So that was, that was yeah. a, that's a transient phenomenon. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, say the non-dual state's here and you have sex, then what seems to happen, what feels like it happens, is that you still keep the thoughtless place. What you lose, some of the sweetness comes out of it. Uh -huh. So it does, as we talk about, drop yeah. down some. But it recovers very quickly, even for an old person. Recovered very quickly. We don't know any of this. Do we, we don't know anybody. Yeah. But but it, but in a day or two, you know, it's it's back up, back up where it was before. So this is not a, a permanent. And I I don't know what it's like for. I used to be twenty five years old. I don't know what it's like for twenty five year olds. But I know uh, there is that taking off. There has been this prohibition for as long as we've had religions and spiritual mm -hmm. people around to be celibate, mm -hmm. which I think is really a, a big mistake. I mean, it it it, it generates all kinds of of bad things and misconceptions as we've seen misconceptions yeah. and it is not necessary it doesn't help you um and you know nisargadatta in his book i am that talked about talked about this about boga 
which is really to go into and experience it. I mean, I, I think sex to me is such a <clears throat> primal, heavily encoded, Darwinianly supported, uh, neurochemically reinforced phenomena. It has to be, which we have seven billion people. But uh, I think I don't think you can stand by and just say, oh, "Yeah, don't no, do that." I don't do that, and hope you get spiritual. I don't think it doesn't work that way. I think sex is when you've got to go into, feel it, exp you know, explore it, understand it. Uh, touch the depths of it, and you can move on from there. But I don't think you can just do this to sex and keep it out of the way. But there are things that we've been saying that are really more intense than sex. Well, and it's as uh, Gandhi said it too, you know, when people are saying, well, you know, can I have possessions? And he would say, sure. Just renounce the possessor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just like, you know, I mean, to really go into sex in the way that you're describing uh -huh actually means that asymptotically you're approaching total selflessness right and that's where it can be actually part of the tool for um, no pun intended for going beyond thought 